has the desk been for the last two and a half months? Um, look, we've been, we've been working. It's been it's been a really challenging off season. Uh, you, you guys have heard me in various forums. I mean, without a CBA, you know, you don't know how much money you have. Um, when you're not sure of some of the internal things to that, like uh, you know what qualifies as a TAM contract and what doesn't, it's difficult truly to sign players uh, without knowing, because until you know for sure how to class that one style of contract, that has knock-on effects across our roster, because um, it impacts potentially you know six, seven, eight players. Uh, so it's been, and you guys know me for better or worse, I'm pretty meticulous and pretty stubborn, and so I, I tend to plan things a long time in advance and. When you don't tell me the rules, I, it, I, I tend to not do my best. So uh, we're working through it. You know, we're patient. Uh, if we had to play a game tomorrow, I think we could win. Um, but likewise, I think we want to add uh, an impact piece or two here before the season gets started. Uh, and that's certainly our goal, and that's what we've been working on. Um, how, how much closer are we to a CBA then? I have no idea, Jose. They wouldn't tell me if they knew. So that's above my pay grade. Um, well, he's lost. He just, he wanted, he's in the airport, and we, so we picked him up at the baggage claim, and we, now, uh, uh, Shane is here at our invitation, and uh, although we haven't heard anything official yet, I believe that we might have something more to say about him pretty soon. What do you think the chances are of getting a CBA accomplished before the uh, deadline at the end of the month? Truly no idea. I, I wish I had more substance and stuff, guys, but the way this works is that gets negotiated league to players union, and truly they don't share information with us. And then, look, there's good reason for it because there's no way they're going to get the same story out to all 26 teams, however many we have right now, and it would all be interpreted differently by all 26. And so it's just – I've been through two of these before, and uh, the third time through, it, it's uh, – just one of those, man, you got to make your peace with it. They'll tell us when they tell us, and when they tell us, then we'll jump in and, and, and do everything we can. And look, in the meantime, it's it's you wind up as a GM doing more work because you have to have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. Now, you may not be able to execute any of them, so I understand why you guys come here and be like, what have you been doing? There's only one center back on the roster. But as soon as we get those the, that direction, those, those things, we'll, we'll move as fast as we can. And in the meantime, there are some things we can do, when I, so I want to stress that. Um, and we are working on one or two impact pieces, hopefully sooner than later, uh, in terms of getting them in before the season. How many, how many different scenarios have you run through about what what the structure might end up looking like? Uh, honestly, endless. I mean, to the point where I've, I've really annoyed our, our data, Robbie Romanini, our data analyst, our cap guy. And he, he sat me down and said, look, you can throw out 16 hypotheticals, but what I'm going to give you at the end is nonsense because once you assume more than two or three things, you're just going to be you're, – you're, you're speculating on speculation. And, and it, it gets – again, just gets really challenging. And, again, I know I sound like a broken record, so, again, it's not lost on me. I wish I had a, something different to tell you, but um, I, I would just – I would say this. You know, we built that team up to last year, right? And we really didn't have to do a whole lot, right? I think Jeremiah – Jeremiah here? No? Yeah, there he is. I think Jeremiah complimented my Executive of the Year award by saying, well, you didn't really do anything this year, so I'm not sure why they gave it to you. Um, and I, 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 took, I, I, I took it as, as, as honestly as I could. And, uh, and I and, uh, teasing Jeremiah, obviously. Um, but the point was that that team was pretty baked. It was, it was, it was pretty, it was, it was not mean, come on. Um, we were mature, you know, I said we were mature, right? I said all our chips are in the middle. We, we were pushed, like, we were ready to go. We, we were rocking and rolling, and, um, and we were. And, you know, this year, we know, you know, Brad Smith probably not coming back. Kim Kee, he's probably not coming back. Roman Torres isn't coming back. Uh, Victor Rodriguez probably isn't coming back. So, you know, we just have some natural turnover. Um, and that happens. And, like, and that, a lot of times, you know, what I would tell you is I've had the good fortune to win a couple of these before. And that off season, after you win, is always the roughest off season because everyone gets recruited, right? They're, they're, understandably and correctly, everyone's like, oh, you have a really good team. We want your players. Uh, and so players get other opportunities. And so we have to always work through that. And if you combine that with not having a CBA, that's been really, that's been really tough. But likewise, what we really don't want to do is we don't want to screw this group up. The core guys who are here are still really good. If you put a starting lineup out tomorrow with just the guys who are here, we would still win a ton of games. And that's really what we've been cognizant of, of these guys are the defending champs, and they've been to three of the last four finals. We're good. We just got to chill out a little bit and wait and do things methodically and correctly once we know everything uh, and just add again a round to support the guys who are here because we got a really good foundation. With all that you just said about uh, preparing yourself in different scenarios, how excited are you for the challenge to make a put together a competitive team given all the circumstances that, that are obviously against you at the moment? 
Yeah, look, it, it is fun, right? Champions Leagues are on the corner. Now, now, Champions Leagues are on the corner, and the good news is, is we don't play until, I think, February 20th. So we got some time. Um, and Olympia's tough, especially that first leg away. That'll be really tough. Um, but that's that's what we want to win, right? We want to start off the year, and we want to try to win Champions League. And we said that you know, since the parade. So uh, that's a big deal to us, and that's why I say, hey, I'd love to get one or two impact pieces in now before the season so they can help us in Champions League. And that has impacted how we've approached the season. Um, and hopefully we're gonna be able to pull that off. So regardless of the CBA, then you'd be able to close a deal if the deal was to get done yep. finalized. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we're trying. You know, we're out there in the marketplace and we're doing what we can and, and you know, we're pursuing, as I said, some some guys will be impactful guys. So we'll, we'll see if we can get something done. We've talked a lot about how you the draft and your feelings on the draft, but you did get a few guys in the draft. How do you feel about the class, and what are those guys that you added that you see you can bring to here and to Compton? We will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll obviously they're obviously out here, so we'll see how they do and assess them and all that stuff. I think to set expectations, I think a lot those guys are more uh, probably going to start with defiance than start with the first team. Just if you look at the last couple drafts that we've had, <clears throat> you know, Alex Roldan stuck, Christian stuck, but I think those are the two big ones. Yeah, Tony O'Farrell stuck for a bit, but you know, so it, we've had some successes, you know, um, but in general, that that's just the way we're trying to, when we pick, you know, our, our top draft pick was Stefan Cleveland. You know, that's that's who we traded for. We traded back in the draft to do that. Um, and then, you know, for those guys we brought in, definitely all get an opportunity, but I think it's probably a longer road for them. Jade, I'm mindful that we didn't get a question before. Well, I was going to say that um, with Shane, he's of a number that you don't have to worry about the whole CBA. Correct. Situation. Correct. Correct. Yeah. The the, the uh, you know the minimum salaries aren't set yet either, but you at least have some idea of where you think those are going to land. And in the way the roster is structured, you have to have four minimum salary players, and so you know that you, if you start filling those spots, then you're you're probably pretty safe in in, in pursuing that. Is it is it safe to say that Seattle Sounders is going to focus more in the academy players and uh, Tacoma Defiance to be ourselves uh, sufficient in terms of player instead of buying every season try to pull uh, like like let's say Barcelona other team that they grow they get their own players is yep. that fair to say that I don't, I don't know if it's black and white um, you know I think we want to do both I mean certainly if we want to get a DP that that is a guy who's very experienced from another country then we'll look at that like you know do we want to do more with our young players to push them through yes I think Danny Leva and Alfonso Campochavez I think they had six or seven starts together last year <clears throat> you know we want that to go up you know we want to sign another couple of kids to the first team this year um, and we think we're gonna have the opportunity to do that so um, it's part of the evolution of the club we started this process about four years ago now um, I think this is year five of our player development comes starting in 16 uh, and we are making progress um, and you know I think everybody's on board with how it's gonna work but right now look our best young players are 17 years old and all over the world that's about when they start to break in and um, again we'll, we'll be patient and we'll try to do it in a way that's sustainable um, but certainly that is a big part of our future but likewise you know look we, we won the title with a very veteran established group and we've been to three of the last four finals and no one is pushing those guys out the door we are trying to ha honestly have our cake and eat it too but what we said in the off season is this we said we got a really good first team. We got really good player development. Literally won the GA Cup, only American team to have done that. Won the national title. Like, you know, we're just as good down here as we're up here. And now our, our challenge for the next couple of years is let's link those trains. And if we can link, if we can link those trains or we can get them pulling together, now we can really be dynamic. Now, now we can take it to the next level. About four years ago, the only academy player practicing with the first team in preseason was Ezreal Gonzalez. Now there are about two dozen between the academy and defiance players here. What's that kind of a symbol of uh, how the organization has integrated those three steps? Across? Well, most importantly, it's because I've done nothing in the offseason. Let's not lose sight of that, Dave. Um, but <laughs> given the given the total lack of uh, first team players, uh, we have been able to take this opportunity to bring some of the young guys in. Uh, on a more serious note, though, no, look, we're really excited. We're in there, and to your point, it's not just those two kids, Danny and Fonz, that we're excited about. We're excited about, you know, at least half a dozen, maybe more than that, of those kids. And I think there are kids in our group on that field today that are going to be signed to the Sounders by opening day. I'm not going to guarantee that. It's up to them. Like, they have to come prove it against the, against the, the men. Um, but Danny Labor did last year. There's no reason somebody can't do it again. And, you know, every year as we kind of tick over and tick over, we, we're hopefully going to have more and more involvement, inclusion, and this is going to become normalized in terms of what we do. You had some changes on your technical and coaching staff. Um, I guess John Hutchinson's out here. Any other changes that, can you, I guess, can you explain what his position is and, and then what other changes there's been? 
technically, uh, uh, John is here. I don't want to deny that he's here. He is visiting. Um, he is not employed by the Sounders. Um, if we were to figure something out down the road, um, then uh, we'll be able to address that at that time. But obviously, John's a friend of the franchise. He's uh, For those of you guys who don't remember, he was the Defiance coach a couple of years ago. He's coaching in Australia. Um, so you know he is uh, a friend of the franchise, and, and he's here visiting right now. Any other changes, uh, like Damian Roden's replacement, those kind of things? Well, we're working. We're working on it. We've had uh, one or two guys in, even in just in the off season. So we're, we're looking through candidates, and, and we're trying to find solutions there. Um, we have the luxury that we have uh, Sean Muldoon, who's just done an amazing job. Um, going back even to 2017, stepping in for Dave Tenney when Dave Tenney went to the Magic, um, and now stepping in for Damian in the interim. So um, we have depth in that position, and uh, you know we probably have asked more of Sean than we should, uh, but we're, so we're trying to get him some help as soon as possible. What was the thought about, uh, behind going to Mexico City for part of camp? Um, altitude and familiarity with that level of opponent. So um, the, one of the, I think the big strengths of that camp is, um, particularly through Gonzalo Pineda's contacts, former Mexican international, um, you know, we can go get some really, really good games in terms of that opposition, that style of play to prepare us for who we might face in Champions League. Combine that with altitude stuff where you get a little bit of extra emphasis in preseason. I think that's what, that's what, that's what pushed us that direction. Do you feel like the, the lack of a, a CBA might hurt this Champions League stuff if you, if you guys can't get anything... Look, if, it, if it drags out long enough, sure. You know, but but again, it's we have right now until the the legal deadline is January 31st, and in the past there've been some extensions on that. So, uh, you know, right now it's not an issue, is what I would say. You know, if if it went into, you know, who knows? If we if we're playing games and we don't have a deal yet, then that gets a little bit more complicated. But you know, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, and hopefully everybody can work out a fair, fair deal in the meantime. Last one or two guys. I'm super excited about Harry coming back. Um, you know, uh, when you asked about the reflection, I was like, Harry, do you want to stay? And then he was like, let me think about it. And then he's like, okay, yeah. And I'm like, all right, let's sign. And then we did that. So, um, you know, Harry's a real smart guy. He's our, he's the union rep for our guy. Uh, and, you know, he, he, you know, wanted to reflect. I mean, because he was a guy that contributed a ton during our season, got us that number two seed. Uh, and then obviously played a little bit less in the playoffs than he was used to. So, um, you know, there will always be a role for Harry. And, you know, this is the other theme for this year that maybe I address now as a macro. I think we played 39 games last year, um, one Open Cup, four playoff, 34 league. We're probably going to play between 45 and 50 this year, depending on Champions League, depending on, on, on a variety of things. We have to play Campione's Cup as well. Uh, so we're going to need more guys, and we're going to need proven guys, and, and all of these guys are going to get reps. And going back to some of the questions about some of the young players, we're going to have lots of opportunities for young players to, to come in and try to prove themselves as well because we're just going to have more reps. And, and the solution to play in 45 games is not to play your top 11 guys, 42 of them. It's, you know, you're going to have more squad rotation. Um, you know, if you go back and look, if you look at Atlanta's schedule last year, you know, they broke down at the end. Joseph Martinez was hurt. You know, we was an interview with him today uh, in the media. A bunch of other guys were just banged up to the point where that contributed to them losing in the semifinal, despite winning Campione's Cup, winning Open Cup, like the amazing season they had again. So I think it's something we need to be mindful of. There's a, there's a bunch of lessons, cautionary tales here. Toronto missed the playoffs after Champions League. Kansas City missed the playoffs after Champions League. Atlanta broke down after playing 48 games last year. So, you know, we got to figure out ways to manage our squad uh, and to balance, you know, on a day-to-day. On a -day -day because the other thing about this, when you play 45 instead of 39, almost all those games are midweek. So now instead of having six uh, midweeks, you got 10 or 12 midweeks. So it's, it's look, there's going to be a lot of challenges for us. Um, uh, we gotta, we got to add some pieces still, um, but we think we're up for it. I mean, this is, this is why you do the job, right? I mean, we've won a couple titles, and certainly we want to pursue that, but, but Champions League is exciting, you know, and, and uh, it's an opportunity for the club. Do something we've never done before. No one's ever done before, and that's, that's fun.